So what is multiple sequence alignment? So it's an alignment of three or more sequences by definition. It looks like this. You've produced ones like this yourselves. Last week, you looked at ones like this before. You have rows of amino acids, so different protein sequences uh, lined up in some way. And in this case, it's colored to highlight some features of similarity between those individual amino acids. And we'll come back to that. And there's actually a plot here. This conservation plot, in fact, is derived from that Venn diagram that I showed you. And it represents where in color where you have a high peak here, it's where the um, amino acids in that column share more properties in common. So it's a kind of way to... Why are they useful? Well, the first thing they do, alignments do, is they link the amino acids, they link the proteins at the amino acid level. So you can say protein A and protein B are similar, but when you do the alignment, you get a linkage at individual amino acids. So if you know a lot about a, a given amino acid in one protein, and it's the same amino acid in the other protein. You can maybe say something similar about that. Um, you can find conserved features, and that's a lot of what um, we, we're going to do in a bit. Um, so you can find positions that are identical across a big family of sequences or have shared properties. Um, you can predict functionally important residues from uh, alignments. If you do anything, has anyone done any phylogeny? Made trees? I mean, apart from what you did in Jalview last week. Yeah, yeah. so one person. So, so phylogeny is a huge subject. People are always interested in building trees for their sequences. And uh, the first thing you have to do to build a tree is build a multiple alignment. And so it's the starting point for that. If you get the alignment wrong, your tree's wrong. So it's really important to get it right. Um, the other thing, I'm not really going to cover, I will talk about profiles in a minute, but it's not really, I'm not going to talk in detail about profile searching, but multiple alignments are the basis for the most sensitive database searching methods. So Cyblast I mentioned is one of these. You build a profile and you search with that rather than a single sequence, and there are others. So it's the most sensitive approaches. It's, multiple alignments are also the basis for training all kinds of methods to predict different features and properties of protein sequences. So when you have a multiple alignment, you can get much more accuracy than for different prediction methods than from a single sequence. And we're going to do a lot on second structure in this course. Um, and that's one example where you can gain a lot of insight from a multiple alignment, which you can't get from just looking at protein sequences individually. And finally, um, it's the standard way, alignments are the standard way of describing and illustrating features about protein sequences in publications. So if you, if you do almost anything with a protein or a nucleic acid and you want to say something about it in a publication, uh, about particular residues, modifications you've made, things you've discovered about which residues are important, which amino acids are important, um, you'll probably show an alignment at some point in your paper. And so multiple alignments are useful at that point where you publish uh, to do that. So when I say link proteins to the amino acid level, what does that mean? I think I've already, maybe I already said this. And I'm going to take you through, uh, am I going to take you an example? Hmm. OK. Um, <clears throat> oh, yes, sorry. Sorry, before getting on to that. So they link proteins at the amino acid level, sequences at the amino acid level. And what that means is when you when you have that alignment of sequences, just strings of letters, effectively what you're saying is that those individual positions that are aligned are structurally equivalent. They are aligned in three, they would be aligned in three-dimensional space. If you, if you knew the three-dimensional structures of all those proteins, that alignment is implying that if you were to superimpose those three-dimensional structures, those residues would be equivalent because the sequence codes for the structure, as we all know, and so it implies that they're equivalent. And I'm going to show you this, this is what I'm going to show you on the next slide, from the three-dimensional structure. You can make alignments when you know the three-dimensional structure of proteins. And this is an example. These are SH2 domains, and there's 22 of them here, and you can see that they are very similar in structure from this uh, figure, can't you? That's good. That's the right reaction. Mm. 
So um, this is what happens if you just download these domains. These are SH2 domains. They bind phosphorylated tyrosine. You download them, load them in, in this case, Pymol or Chimera or any, any kind of molecular visualization tool. You just get this tangled mess. Okay. You can run them, though, through a, a, a structure-based alignment tool that takes account of the three-dimensional structural information and will give you the best superimposition of the multiple sequences, multiple structures, and a sequence alignment that corresponds to that. And this is using, this is using a program called STAMP, which was developed in my group a long time ago, still quite widely used. It's still incredibly widely used, actually. There's very little that's better than it, even today, which is nice. We were right, you know. <laughs> um, and in this case, we're just showing C-alpha atoms. So each point here is a C-alpha atom. It's not every, obviously, to show so many structures with all the atoms would be very, very difficult to visualize. So these are just C-alpha atoms. And you can see that there's, you know, kind of a beta sheet here, uh, some similarities. There's a bit of helix red in red behind there uh, in the core. But the key thing here, as I say, is its core of domain has conserved structure, so the structure is conserved. <clears throat> but there is a lot of variability in the loops that connect the regular secondary structures. So what this is saying, although these proteins share structural similarity, they're not identical. They vary in length. In this case, it's a big insertion here in a loop. There are differences in conformation here and length in the loop between the secondary structures. And so when you're looking at sequences, you have to bear this in mind, that when you're aligning sequences, not every position that you align has any kind of structural or functional meaning. It's, it's a construct from the sequence alignment. If you look at the structure, you can see which parts. You know, there's a core part and then there's variable parts. And I'll show you, when we talk about secondary structure prediction, I'll go back to SH2 domains and take you through this in more detail and how you can use this information when you have multiple alignment, you can use this information in a productive way to understand what's going on. So this is the sequence alignment derived from that three-dimensional structure comparison. These are the sequences along here, and underneath these are the secondary structure. These are helices and these are strands. We know what these are because we know the three-dimensional structure and crystallography. We know the 3D structure of these proteins. So this is the first part of it, and it goes on a bit. This was actually displayed with a program called Alscript, not Jalview. STAMP has this feature where it actually tells you which parts of the three-dimensional structure alignment it thinks are reliable, i.e. where it thinks that they are structurally conserved and the parts that aren't. So these regions are considered to be aligned reliably, and you'll see they correspond pretty much where there aren't any gaps, any gaps in the alignment. The parts in between I mean this part here, between this group of sequences, these are probably structurally reliable, but across the whole set um, there's variation in this loop here between these two regions, and so you know, it doesn't actually mean anything in terms of um, the alignment between you know, this and these possibly has very little meaning. Uh, and I'll come back to come back to that. Now. That's a continuation of it. Okay. So that's that's a that's a multiple sequence alignment derived for a protein three-dimensional structure set, and. You know, if you like, that's the best possible multiple sequence alignment you can ever produce because it's given an awful lot of information. You know the three-dimensional structure, X, Y, Z coordinates of every amino acid, and so you can superimpose them and you can get the best possible alignment of the sequences. Normally what you're doing is you don't have the 3D structure, you just have the sequence. You just have the amino acid sequence as one letter code. <coughs> 